Hey guys, this is Silwolf and I'm going to do a video today about the differences in technology through the years. Well, I say through the years but I've basically got an old robot and a new robot and I'm going to be telling you how technology has come since the old one was made. So we have a few shout outs, they are a right to be named and also Hayes Coleman has gone to Disneyland Resort, have a good trip. MJ Music Test, Mama Furby and her Furbies, and they are Gizmo, Molly, Kevin, Emma, Lola and Blue Raspberry. Mia the Furby and Furby Fan 2004. And also Peppa Pig Needs More Subs. And that's the user Peppa Pig, not the cartoon character, obviously. Unless the cartoon character is on YouTube, which wouldn't surprise me given the interesting people we have on the internet. Anyway, so we've got these two sausage dogs. This was a request actually from one of my, my subscribers. Uh, they are indeed sausage dogs, dachshunds with long bodies. I wouldn't have put this one down as as being one, but I suppose it does look a bit like a sausage dog. So uh, these are the two that I'm going to be comparing. They are so kind of similar, being the same breed. Now we've got Ruby here. Ruby comes from the 1960s. She is very old and she was my first robot. You can actually see the video of her at the end of this video that I did to show what she does. Um, the other one is Jinky, of course, the Zuma Playful Pup, which was made last year. So we've got the 1960s and 2018, and how technology has changed in that time. It has come a long way. Now, back when Ruby was made, the robots were, they had like a plastic body, with normally with fur stuck to them. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen those little rabbits that, uh, little plastic rabbits with fur on them, and they kind of hop about and do backflips. I think you can get dogs as well. The robots back then were kind of like that. They had a battery compartment in them and they'd hop along. They might bark or something and sometimes they'd do backflips or something like that. Now Ruby was special in that she was a remote control one. Back then of course you didn't have remote controls unless they had a cable on them. This also applied to your television as well. The first TV remote controls had a cable leading to the television. Um, which I think might have been back in the 70s. I think the ones with the uh, infrared came in in the 80s. I might be wrong on that. Um, now they've moved to things like Bluetooth. I mean, my Amazon Fire Stick works, I'm pretty sure, with Bluetooth because I could be sitting on the remote control and press the button and it'll still work. But anyway, digressing. So the remote control toys back then, it was attached to the toy, um, which made it, of course, easy. But it was also quite magical because you could have this and direct the toy, you know, and make it go forward or backward or bark or whatever. Um, so these ones obviously took batteries, they didn't take rechargeables. I'm not sure if rechargeable batteries were available in the 60s. Um, but, I mean, it would take, actually, no, I don't think this one would take rechargeables because they're big chunky batteries unless they made rechargeable ones of those. Uh, but you bet, yeah, basically, you didn't really get rechargeable ones. Now, most robots these days have batteries inside them that are rechargeable, and they charge with a one of these USB, micro USB. They charge that way. But of course, with these battery packs inside them, the batteries don't necessarily last as long as the old ones. You could put two large chunky batteries in here with plenty of energy and the dog would work for hours. This one, she works for about half an hour. That's it. Uh, I say she, actually, I think it's a he because we discovered, didn't we? Um, if you watch my video about this one, it cocks its leg like a male dog. So that's a, that's a boy, that's a girl. Anyway, so going back to the look of this one, they were quite realistic. I think back then they did try and make the robots realistic because they were trying to emulate a real dog for kids that couldn't have dogs. So you've got this little dog here with his collar on and the lovely little eyes there, little plastic eyes, which look quite realistic. Also, she has a realistic looking sort of nose there, little plastic nose. And she's covered with fur, which is very soft. And she's got little floppy ears. Um, all her mechanics, of course, on the inside. Now, these days, they could make robots like that, but a lot of them, as we know, are plastic, and they don't have fur covering them. Well, except for Furbies, of course. But a lot of the robot dogs these days, Ibos, um, Zuma dogs, and things like that, they don't have the fur on them for the simple reason that it's cheaper just to make a plastic dog. Um, this one does have fur-covered ears, but again, 
so much cheaper to make just a plastic dog and not have it covered in fur. I'm not sure how much this one would have cost, but uh, I don't, don't think it would have been that much. This one wasn't made by a known company. Um, it was just a walking dachshund. Um, as for movement, this one, as we know, moves all over the place. It's got um, a joint in the middle of its body so it can turn and roll over and it's got these little paws with um, non-stick sort of pads underneath so that it can run around and not slip up. It is sometimes a little bit top heavy. The tail doesn't need to move because it wiggles. For the same reason this one's tail doesn't move at all either, it just wiggles. So there's a similarity there. It's much easier to make it do that and then it just moves by itself. You don't need to put a joint in it. This one has LED eyes that light up and also it's got the sensors on the nose so it should theoretically know when it's going to bump into something because it gets dark. Also she has I keep calling it a she. He has a mouth that opens and closes as well. However, she also has a mouth that opens and closes and inside her mouth is a squeaker so that she makes a tiny yip yip noise. So they both have that as well, which is quite similar. This one is all over the place, whereas this one kind of just walks forwards and backwards. Again, this one doesn't need a remote control and its voice is all inside it. You can hear it come out of the holes there quite a lot of robots have th similar things these days. Um, this one has no sensors. Back then you didn't have, I don't think you had robots back in the 60s that had any sort of sensor on it. It didn't know if it was being stroked or anything. This one's got a head sensor, of course it's got a nose sensor, and it also has the button here where you can press and it knows it's being petted. So it's got a lot of internal stuff that sort of like comes through on the external. Um, I'm pretty sure that these buttons are much cheaper to make than those, which is why probably it's only got one that you stroke in its head. And in its body it's got a button, because, like I said, it's cheaper. They could put touch sensors all over it, but then the price would go up. This one um, doesn't have a self-writing mechanism. I think actually the head turns too. I can't remember now. Yeah, it does. The head does turn slightly. This one has a self-writing mechanism. If you put it on its back, it will roll over and stand up again or do what it does. It doesn't really stand. It kind of flops about everywhere, as we know, but uh, Zuma Playful Pup's just crazy. So you can see that technology has come a long way since then. I mean, back then you had a robot which had a remote control. It would only do certain things. It couldn't hear you, it couldn't feel you, it would go forwards, backwards, perhaps it would bark, and its legs and head would move. These days you've got robots which are voice activated, you can teach them things like Zoom a Playful Pup. They know when you touch them, they know when you speak to them, they're kind of aware of their surroundings, other than of course the Ibos which are aware of pretty much everything and have their own cameras inside. These ones don't, I mean, I chose to do these two because it was a suggestion but also they are very similar. I wouldn't have compared this to an Ibo for example because it's kind of completely different. It's just sort of like a baseline robot and how it's changed over the years. So yeah technology has come a long way since then. I mean who knows if, if the people in the 60s if you could go back in time and take the Zuma to them and say look this is what they turn out like would they believe us? Who knows, it's all very science fiction-y. But as you know, um, the future can be predicted sometimes. Um, we can predict what's going to happen. So that's pretty much it for the uh, comparison of these two robots and uh, the technology that goes with it. Um, I like how it's heading. I mean, you've got very, very smart robots such as Ibos and Vector. And then you've got these ones which are more kind of budget but still come across as pretty smart. And the budget ones have come a long way even so um, over the years. I mean this one, I like the Zoomers but the Playful Pup's my favourite because it kind of moves slightly more realistically than the other, the other Zoomers. And I say slightly, if your dog was having a fit it would be quite realistic. Um, but they've also got a very appealing look as well. Both of them are very cute. I think that they look less realistic these days though. So that's pretty much it for this one. I hope I didn't ramble too much. 
10 minutes of rambling. Um, if you want to see more videos of these two, you can. Their boxes are coming up below uh, where I introduce Ruby and also Jinky as well. So, without any more words, this is Silver signing off, and I'll see you all later. Bye!